So we've already gone over uh, Boyle's Law. The relationship between volume and pressure looks like that. And my equation was V is equal to K, and since it's an inverse relationship, it's 1 over P. pressure on the y-axis because volume was our independent variable. But you can write these any way you want. I mean, in an experiment, you put the independent on the x. But if I'm just writing stuff down, the graph does not change depending on what axis it's on. <coughs> Charles? Temperature in Calvin. Now, K is a constant. This K is a constant. But they're different constants. So, how will I distinguish between those different constants? How can I tell someone that this K, I think we calculated this K to be like 680,000. And this K in this lab was something like 0 0.02 something. Like this was a, less than 1. So how do you distinguish or tell someone that these are both constants but different constants? Well, in math, what they do is they put a little tally up there. It's not a number one, it's like a little tally. That's called a prime. So sometimes in math you'll see k, k prime, k double prime, k triple prime. It just means uh, different versions of the same thing. So this is a different constant, k prime. What about if we compare volume versus the number of gas particles? In moles. So how does volume versus the number of gas particles in moles, what do you think the graph would look like there? Line. Be a line? Should it go through the origin like temperature did? Yeah. Well, sometimes. If, if there's no gas particles, <laughs> if there's no gas, Will you have a volume? No. no. Temperature in Kelvin. So this graph goes to the origin when temperature is in Kelvin. If your temperature is in Celsius, then it doesn't go through the origin. Is yep, Mackenzie. Pressure in the boil would it, like, why did the one over pressure and the equation of that one over pressure? In the graph? If I were to graph, 1 over P, then it becomes linear. So to turn an inverse graph into a linear graph, you graph 1 over it. Yep, Abby. Could, in the volume and number of gas particles, can it go the other way too? You mean put N over here and V there? No, like this one. You mean inverse? Yeah. No. No, I mean like this one. Oh, a negative slope? Yeah. No, it has to be a positive slope. So V equals double prime KN. And if we wanted to, we could do a lab like this and measure the K double prime. Now I'm going to do a little bit of algebra here. Sure. A quick question. Um, this 
this should be on the this should be on the line of dogs so we don't break this. Is that that looks right. I think you typed in that data part wrong. I could be wrong, but maybe right. I'm right. So I'm gonna write it like this. <coughs> So I wrote them in terms of their constants. P times V is a constant. V over T is a constant. V over N is a constant. So what do you think you get when you multiply a constant times a constant times a constant? A constant. A constant times a constant is a constant. So if I take these three equations and I combine them, constant times a constant is a constant. What do you think we should call this super constant? Wait, why wouldn't it be, why is there only one V if there's three of them? Um, Wait, are these just all the ones just combined together? They're all combined together. I took all three lias and I combined them together. Would it be V cubed? I didn't multiply the equations together. I'm just combining all the factors into one. So that equation is right? That equation is right. I don't get how all the k's are together, but the v's are there's only one v. I can show you in a second. So um, k times k prime times k double prime is a constant. We're going to call this constant R. The ideal gas constant. Yep, because a constant times a constant times a constant is a constant. So instead of doing k times k prime times k double prime all the time, I'm just going to call it r. The value of r, 8.31. Now what about the units? Our pressure is in kPa. Our volume is in liters. So in the numerator, our units would be kPa times liters. In the denominator, our temperature is in Kelvin, and N is in moles. So it would be... So the units on the ideal gas constant are 8.31 kPa liters per Kelvin mole. Now, if your pressure is in atmospheres, then your constant changes to 0 0.0821. And then it's not kPa liters, it's atmospheres times liter over k mole. So again, this is on appendix K, but these are the two numbers. You're going to use this a lot, so you will memorize it with time. I'm going to rearrange this equation into its most common form, PV equals NRT. And that's the ideal gas law. So now we've got a fourth equation. We've got Boyles, we've got Charles, we've got combined, and we've got ideal. So um, how does that work algebraically? Uh, let's do it in terms of uh, being proportional to V. So V is proportional to 1 over P, right? 
And um, this part isn't as important, but I just was since it was asked. V is proportional to what's the relationship to um, V and T? It's that type of proportionality, right? So V is proportional to 1 over P and it's proportional to T. So therefore V would be proportional to T and P. V is proportional to M. So I could say that V is proportional to NT over P. If I do a little bit of algebra, PV is proportional to NT. And then how do you turn a proportionality into an equation? At a constant. Except we don't use the letter K, though I have seen it written this way sometimes, Delaney, in some books, PV equals KNT. But they use the letter R. So that's the rest of the story.